Mario, you also not only preach the gospel with words, but with power. And, um, and Jesus said that these signs will follow those who believe when we preach the gospel. And he talks about healings and deliverance and all kinds of signs and wonders. So do you want to share a little bit about that as we um, just, you know, continue to co conversate on this? Well, I, I, I love that you're asking me because you're, you're used of God in this very way. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, Paul said, I have fully preached the gospel. He said, and with mighty signs and wonders, I fully preach the gospel. The gospel is not fully preached without miracles. It can be preached without miracles. We've proven that, but it can't be fully preached. You see, God never wanted you, my friend, to hear a message that would involve the final eternal destination of your soul on dead, dry words. Mm -hmm. It is also confirmed by miracles. Now, in the tent, what we've discovered is that when that moment comes, I, I may be in the middle of a sermon, I might be toward the end, but Patricia, I'm telling you, there is an in unmistakable moment where it's almost like the air just stands still and a blanket falls on the people and you know that miracles are breaking out some of them are called out others of them god does it on his own just like he raised lazarus from the dead with nobody's permission god will heal cancer and remove sickness then we'll instruct the people go to your doctor you know, you, you, God's not going to blame you if you keep taking your medicine. Go to your doctor. Get it confirmed. Let your doctor tell you, look, your diabetes is gone. It's not in your body anymore. But one of the things that I feel is so important is that signs and wonders have lost their edge. What uh, Billy, Billy Burke calls it the wow factor. He said, we've lost the wow factor. Why? Because the gifts of the spirit are not supposed to happen just among Christians. The weapons of our warfare are mighty to the tearing down of strongholds. So when Miss Kuhlman would be in the Shrine Auditorium, and I, I feel a, a heartache for anyone that doesn't know who I'm talking about, Miss Catherine Kuhlman, when she was in the Shrine in Los Angeles, and I saw crippled children get up and walk, and blind eyes open, which we are now watching the same thing in our tent. It, it is, there's no words to describe how it breaks me to think that the same things I once witnessed as a spectator, now I'm on the other side where I have to command them and release them in the name of Jesus. But one of the things that made it so powerful was her integrity. It was her sincere death to self. And, and healing and the gifts of the spirit have become spurious. They become entertainment. They become something that Christians are, are hoarding to themselves instead of realizing that the amount of power we would see would multiply greatly if we would turn it on the lost, where it belongs, where it, where it belongs among those who are addicted, those who are broken, those who are helpless. And then the power flows. And, and I, I feel so strongly that we need to get back to that. Yeah. God wants to do it. That's the exciting part. There's not a pastor watching. God wants your Sunday morning service to become an explosion of provable, undeniable miracles. And look at how the word will spread throughout an entire community. When, God's, when Jesus healed, you, there was never room for people to sit. They had to tear the roof off to get one of some of the people into the building. Amen. <laughs> I love that. And yes, you know, the kingdom of God, you know, when you think of heaven, just any of you that are watching right now, just think of heaven in your own understanding of it right now. And I can guarantee that probably all of you know, you know, even if you've never been taught it before, that heaven is a beautiful place. It's full of love. There's no sickness, there's no depression, there's no suicidal thoughts, there's no addiction, there's none of that. It's just a free, joyful, love-filled environment that is amazing. It is totally true utopia. And so when Jesus said repent, 
which is to turn in another direction because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He's saying, come on, I want you to, to, to look at something greater than yourself. I want you to look yes. at what God has created for you. And in that kingdom, there is freedom from sickness, freedom from disease, freedom from, from what binds you. His power comes. He said, pray in this way, your kingdom come, your will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. So if you're watching right now and you're wanting to get to know Jesus, you can know him not only as one who forgives your sin, but as one who will heal your sickness, as one who will deliver you from bondage. He's that good. And we just release that power onto you Amen. right now. We release Jesus. We release Jesus into your midst to heal you, to deliver you, to set you free, to forgive you of your sin, to save you and give you a brand new life. And you, if you just receive that by faith, in fact, some of you are feeling that presence right now. Yes. And it is it, so beautiful. And again, just let us know in the comment section that you're being touched by Jesus or, you know, say, I need Jesus and I've got him now. <laughs> so Amen. Awesome. But um, Mario, just as we're finishing up here, um, I, I've been around uh, tent evangelism and uh, crusade evangelism. There's something about being in the atmosphere that literally transforms you, you know, because you can feel the excitement of Jesus himself, right? And it's, yes. and it's so awesome. And I just want to encourage our, our people to get more connected with you and your ministry. Thank you. Thank um, you. That they could, you know, I mean, Mario has books and training and equipping, and you can be on site and you can financially support the Crusades. There's nothing better. I don't mean, just think about this sowing finance into a ministry that is facilitating masses of people coming to know Jesus. And when you get before the Father on that day, he says, thank you, thank you so much. Look at all the people that you've, you've brought to me. And you think, I don't remember seeing them. And he says, oh, remember when you sowed that seed or remember when you were on site interceding or um, remember when you partnered with a ministry that really cared. And this is unto your account. And there's no greater gift, I don't think, that we can give the Father than, than to bring that which he cherishes to him. Yes. And so yeah. I just want to encourage yeah. those of you that are watching to get to know uh, Mario Marillo's ministry more. Get involved. Maybe go on site. I mean, you could even go out and invite people into all the meetings and everything. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just so much fun. You'll never be the same. You know, you don't have to go overseas to be on the mission field. We've got it right here. Right, right here. Now. And whatever, whatever nation you live in, as, as you're watching, this is for every, every nation, every people just, just go for it in Jesus. So Mario, how can they get um, connected with you again? Well, just simply go to mariomarillo.org. That's all. And I was going to say something, just take 30 seconds. Uh, you know, we can inform and train and, and give people methods and techniques, but 90% of it is excitement. Yeah. When, you know, there's a pastor who had his church was dying. He came into our tent, traveled, got there, and he stayed a week. And he went back to his church, and it is now tripled in size. It's three times the size of what it was before he visited the tent crusade. And, and yet he couldn't point to any specific technique or tactic or anything that we unfolded. I said, well, what happened to you? He said, I just got excited. I got so excited that, that I just started preaching with excitement, expectation, and asked the people to bring their friends. And, and he said, I got excited about winning souls. And it's as simple as that. If you that are watching, that are leaders, will just let that excitement. You can see it in Patricia's eyes. You see it, this, this thing that though we can teach the deeper things of God, we get so excited about just the miracles and the lives being changed. That is the most exciting thing of all.